Welcome to this short video that introduces Microsoft Project. The goal of this video is to provide you with a basic overview of the user interface for Microsoft Project, how to get data into MS Project, some of the things we want to keep in mind when working with this particular piece of software, and how to view and report information back out of Project. This is the first of several videos that will continue to build on one another. When we first start up Microsoft Project, where you will hopefully see a few things that look familiar. At the top of the page, you will see the menuing system called the ribbon. This is a common across all Microsoft Office applications. In Microsoft Project, the ribbon is grouped into areas on the various components of our project. First is the task. Second is the resources that we might assign to our tasks. Third is the project itself and the various ways we have to view and format our project information. If you want to have more area on your screen for your project, you can collapse the ribbon by double-clicking on one of the main menu items. If you then want to select a particular function, you just go up here and select that main uh, item again, and it'll provide you with a drop-down for all those particular uh, items under that category. If you want to restore the ribbon back to its full glory, you can simply double click again on any top menu item. If you look below the ribbon, you'll see the main part of the screen is divided into two regions, the table view on the left and a graphical view on the right. The table view is com comprised of various rows and columns in which, into which we can enter information. The graphical portion will represent our data to us once it's entered so we can more effectively analyze it. You can allocate different amounts of space to the table or graphical areas by clicking and dragging on the vertical bar that separates these two areas like so. In the table portion, you can also change the width of the columns by clicking and dragging on these lines that separate the columns. You can change the scale of the data that's presented in the graphical section several ways. First, you can use the zoom function in the lower right-hand corner of the screen to zoom in or to zoom out. However, this is not very precise, and sometimes you can end up with time scales like 24 hours or, uh, or 18 days or uh, something that might not uh, fit on the screen just the way you want it to. As such, I tend to stay away from using this and instead go to the View menu and choose the time scale that I want. You can see right here that it's picked 11 days as a time scale. Perhaps not a really standard unit for viewing uh, information about our project. So I can choose here days, <coughs> thirds of months, months, quarters, half years, so forth and so on. <clears throat> Let's enter some information into our sheet. Before we do so, we need to consider how we want to schedule our tasks. You will notice that by default our tasks are scheduled manually. It tells us this in the bottom left-hand part of the screen. This means that we will have to set the date on which each one of our tasks starts, and this is going to constrain our tasks in some ways that we may not really like. It is better to have our tasks automatically scheduled so that Microsoft Project can adjust their dates and then manually override Microsoft Project when we need to. So we'd rather change this to auto schedule. We can use that selector at the bottom as I just did to change our tasks for this particular project that we're working on and it will change the settings for this file. However, it would be better if we set the uh, this particular feature for both our current file as well as any subsequent files we might create. So let's do that by going to the file menu, going to options, coming down to schedule, <coughs> and then here it says scheduling options for this project. We're going to change that for all new projects and we're going to say that they're auto scheduled. Select OK. Tells us down here all new tasks are auto-scheduled and now we're ready to enter some task information. So I'm going to enter task A, task B, task 
Task C, <clears throat> Task D, until I have five tasks centered. Notice that each one of these is set to one day question mark. That means by default Microsoft Project assumes that this might take uh, at least uh, one day. Come over here and we can actually see these uh, on the uh, Gantt chart or this graphical representation over here. <clears throat> Puts a question mark by it because it doesn't know if this is necessarily true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter some days here. I'm going to enter three and just hit return. Four, three, four, three. And you can see now that our project is laid out and it looks like it will take approximately four working days for this project to be complete. What we need to do is we need to tell Microsoft Project that these uh, tasks, let's just assume, cannot all happen in parallel. Okay, so it's going to assume from the get-go that these things can all happen in parallel and that our project can be done in just four days. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to move this over here so I can see the column of predecessors. <clears throat> a predecessor is basically a task that must complete before this task can get started. So let's assume that task A must complete before task B can get started. Task C must complete uh, must have task B completed before it can start, so forth and so on. To enter the predecessor information, we'll have to enter the ID for each task. Okay, so we can't just try to enter the name. If I try to enter the name, you'll see that we'll get an error. Okay, it's wanting the ID, but which is listed over here in this first column that we can't change. So that's number one for task A. Number two for task B, number three for task C, and so forth and so on. You'll see that what's happening over here in our Gantt chart, our graphical representation of the project, is you'll see that uh, these tasks are becoming linked. And it shows us graphically here that task C ends, and then the next day we can get started on task D. Notice one other thing here is that uh, Saturday and Sunday are not work days. So even though this is a four-day task, it is going to take six actual days before it is done because our workers, for some bizarre reason, are not going to uh, work on the weekend. <clears throat> Let me show you a couple other ways that you can edit, enter the predecessor information. So I'm just going to clear these out here. <clears throat> Now, one way that you can do it is you can actually bring up what's called the task information dialog box for each of these tasks and then select the uh, predecessors from that. So if I double click on task B, you can see that I can come in here and uh, there's a tab for predecessors <coughs> and I can select then by task name the task that has to complete in order for task B to actually get started. I can also change the duration of the task and I can also change the type of relationship it has with task A. A finish to start means that task A has to finish before uh, B can get started. A start to start means that task A would have had to have started prior to B getting started. A finish to finish means that task A would have to finish before B could finish. And a start to start would mean that uh, task A would have to start uh, in order for task B to finish, which that one is kind of a rare uh, instance. Uh, <clears throat> we usually don't find that. But there are different types of relationships, so we're kind of foreshadowing here the fact that we may be exploring these different types of relationships in subsequent labs. Okay, so that's one way that I can enter that information. You see that has the same result over here. The other way that some people uh, use is they will come over here and they will um, mouse over the bar that is representing their task. And if they click and hold down, they can 
pull away and they'll get this kind of link indicator. Okay. I tend not to like that because you'll notice that sometimes I can come up here and I can grab it and I can accidentally move that task, okay, which I don't necessarily want to do. Okay. Um, so I think that's kind of the danger, if you will, of using that particular technique is that you can actually move the task or you may accidentally shorten the duration of the task and just simply not notice what you've done there. Uh, if you do do something uh, like that and you want to restore the where you were before, you can simply uh, perform an undo. That's listed up here in the upper left. It's also the Control Z function will get you an undo. So I tend to use that a lot. If I have see that I've accidentally changed something, I hit Control Z and I'll restore that for me. Okay, so those are the basic ways that we can enter that predecessor information. <clears throat> Let's also look at how we might get a summary task. We know that our um, project here takes somewhat more than four days now, but rather than having to go over here and add this all up, it might be nice to get just some basic summary information. If I come over here to uh, Format, you'll see that there's an option here for a pro project summary task. So if I click on that, you'll see that I now have this nice summary task that is uh, going across the top of my project. And it tells me this project is going to last 17 days. It will also roll up or calculate the values for other things such as uh, the cost of our project, <coughs> other types of uh, information that we may have entered. Now you'll notice here that we have some basic columns to start out with uh, in this uh, table view. I can hide uh, columns here. So if I want to hide these columns about when things start. I can also add a new column. I can either add it here on the right or I can add it uh, anywhere that I would like. So if I want to come over here and select insert column and perhaps this is where I want to have my cost information it will enter that information in there. There's a little bit of a shortcut here. We can obviously add and remove columns and get exactly the layout that we want. But if you see this little part here where the rows and the columns come together, we can actually come over here <coughs> and this little square where they intersect, um, if we right click on it, we can choose different pre-laid out um, sets of columns for our table. You see you can come down here to more tables and we'll start to be able to get things like earned value cost indicators that will come in useful later. <clears throat> and it has a nice little layout that pulls all those specific indicators into this table for us. I don't know what to call this little thing where the columns and rows intersect, so I often call it the Tribble. So I just uh, tell my students to right click on the Tribble and you will get these various options here. There's another thing that we can do uh, as far as how we view our data once it's into Microsoft Project, <clears throat> and that is we can view it in different ways through uh, this Gantt chart, through network diagrams and things of that nature. Let's uh, come up here to uh, Task, and you'll notice here that I can select from this drop-down menu <coughs> different ways to view my project. Okay, so lots of different ways that we're going to be exploring. You also notice over here I have expanded out uh, a way that I can see these little icons so that I can um, quickly navigate to some of these uh, well-known and well-used uh, layouts. How I got that there was I simply right clicked in this area and selected view bar. If I don't have that turned on, this is probably what your um, Microsoft Project Startup looking like. You'll just have this little label here for Gantt chart. Now you can right click on it and you can jump to one of the uh, views if you would like to do that. If you would like instead to have that little list of icons, you can click on the view bar and then you can see that. 
Okay, so that should give you kind of a basic overview of uh, the ways that we can get some data into Microsoft Project, how to navigate around uh, to different table views, to different uh, views about our data, how to enter some basic tax task information, how to change the uh, duration of those tasks, how to link them together, and uh, how to also get a summary information about uh, our particular project. Before we conclude this video, there's one last thing that I want to address, and that is setting the project start date. If you remember at the beginning of this video, I talked about the fact that we want to have all of our new tasks be auto-scheduled. I showed you that down here. I also showed you a way that we could go into File and Options, and we could actually change that for all subsequent projects that we create with Microsoft Project. Let's look at this particular uh, project that I have. I'm going to insert the start, which is really the early start column here. And it basically has said that um, this project can start today. That's not really realistic because normally we're planning for projects that might start way in the future. So let me show you the one and only way that I think you should set the project start date. And that is by coming here to Project tab and then Project Information. And here you can set the start date and you can set it for many months or years in the future. I'll go down here and set uh, this project to start on my birthday, October 11th. Go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that October 11th was a Saturday. And so Microsoft Project has figured out that the soonest time that we can start these first tasks is going to be that next Monday, the 13th. Okay, so I just wanted to leave you with that, uh, that that's where we're going to set the project start date. We will see that from this project information dialog, there are several other things that we can set here, such as the current date, the status date, the calendar that we're using, but we'll be visiting those in subsequent videos. So hopefully that gives you a good, uh, well-rounded introduction to Microsoft Project, and you can go on to the next video. Thank you very much.